My name is Mary Kay, and I am a member of the rehabilitation team here at Medell. Um, it's now time for the workshop, Music for Your Child. So before we get started, we're going to have a poll question. Uh, so we'll bring that up and just asking who is joining us today. Are you a caregiver of a child who has a hearing implant? Are you professional in the field of hearing loss? Are you a hearing implant user yourself or other? Okay, so we're getting some responses in. I'll give you another few seconds. All right. So we have professionals and others joining us. So welcome and hopefully you'll find this information um, and the activities that we do to be fun and informative. So we're gonna go ahead um, and start with then our first question of today because we have a few. What are some instruments that you have at home? And when you're thinking about instruments, think also about what are maybe some toy instruments that you have that you might, um, that might be a child's instrument uh, that you might be using, okay? So please go ahead and type that in chat. And while you're doing that, I'm going to ask Johanna to join us. And Johanna, do you have any instruments or toy instruments that you use at home? Yeah, so um, when we prepared this question, we thought that more parents are here. Uh, so I'm gonna just share from a parent perspective what instruments I have at home. Um, I do have a keyboard, which is accessible to my daughter who's not two years old yet. I uh, do have a guitar and then I have a bunch of different toy instruments for her uh, from the typical act shakers to uh, from to a five key piano which she started using once she started you know wiggling with her feet and trying to reach things with her hands. Um, and then what else? Let me see. Uh, I do have a little guitar for her, which she uses sometimes. That is more of a, I would say in this case, a more rhythmic instrument because you have to uh, tap along to a song or, or you can create the song by tapping. And um, I don't know if we still have time or if you want to move on to the yeah. chat, but um, this is not so much a music, like a toy instrument, but it is a toy that, that helps children explore instruments. And um, not that I'm advertising any particular toys here or brands. I just actually got that handed down from my sister-in-law, but I thought it was pretty um, neat. And so, what you can do is uh, you have here different spots where you can put instruments and you know you can buy a bunch of these and then um, there are different types of games like how many instruments are playing or push down a particular instrument but um, my daughter who's still very young um, first of all she just loved to pull out the buttons and stick them back in. So you're practicing motor skills. And then um, she's actually listening to all the different instruments we have. And yeah, getting to know the saxophone and the bass and the steel drum, which I really love. And uh, so, yeah, I think, you know, there are many toys, uh, musical toys available that are fun to play with at home. I love that. I love the idea that people maybe don't really realize that some of these musical toys can actually be considered instruments and really start exposing children to music. Um, I think Johanna gave us really a very nice um, array of different toy instruments um, that could be at home. And I have no doubt she has real instruments, but I won't have her pull in a piano um, to show us with that. Okay. And I think to let me add a, a little bit to this point mm -hmm. is uh, because we have professionals here in the workshop is, of course, you know, when you talk to parents um, or caregivers of children that use hearing implants, um, maybe that is a question that you can ask to see 
what do they have at home and make them realize and more actively use those toys when playing with their children. Yeah, that is a, definitely a, a great tip to be using because we don't need to go out and buy all kinds of brand new things just use what you have at home already. And I'd probably be surprised um, how many of them are um, geared for yes. music for young children. Yes. Yeah, okay. So well, what I would like to do next is introduce Johanna because you already met her. So now who is this person? <laughs> so this is Johanna Boyer, who you've just seen. She's a musicologist and research associate who's been working with Medel for, um, well, since 2012. So I guess that's 10 years already. And she focuses on the topic of music and cochlear implants and as it relates to research, rehabilitation and education and awareness. So she's based in the United States um, office and she's a member of the North America Research Laboratory where she conducts music research. Um, she earned her master's degree in musicology with minors in music education and sociology from the Julius Maximilians University in Würzburg, Germany. Hopefully I said that correctly. Good job. <laughs> and she will be leading us through uh, the workshop today because she's a musicologist. And before I get any further than that, um, Johanna, could you please tell us what is a musicologist? I know you get this question. <laughs> so maybe we'll start with that one. Okay. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. I got this question this morning in another workshop and um, actually it was asked this question many times while I was studying musicology. So um, musicology is the study of music. It's the um, scholarly analysis and research based study of music. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was studying musicology, there, there are three different main branches. Uh, I was focusing on historical musicology back then. Um, and now I would say I'm using much more knowledge from the systematic musicology, which involves music theory, um, music related to physiology, psychology, music pedagogy, um, and actually, I didn't expect to use my degree in that extent. So, yeah. Well, well we appreciate you here at Medell because you are our topic manager in music and clearly you are involved in a lot of music things. So, <laughs> so our music for your child workshop today is a live and interactive workshop that will review some concrete goals and some music activity ideas to inspire children and help them appreciate music to their fullest. Uh, the workshop today is for parents and caregivers of children who have hearing implants, um, as well as rehabilitation specialists. And I know that we have several um, who have joined us and I can see that we're having more people join. So maybe we've got some parents or caregivers, or caregivers that have also joined. Um, and this will help, you know, look at if you're looking for resources um, and inspiration uh, for working in music. So myself as a rehabilitationist, I am aware of the importance of music in a child's life. Um, so as you can see on the slide that will be coming up, that for children with typical hearing, music has many benefits, including in the area of communication, listening, language, cognition, fine and gross motor, social, emotional, and creative skills. That music is just so important for all of these areas. And we know that children who have hearing implants and have access to sound also have the ability to obtain these benefits. So as the musicologist, Johanna, can you tell us or provide us with a little bit more information about the importance of music for children and why music rehabilitation is something we should be thinking about and providing for these children? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So to expand a little bit um, what you reported, we learned from research that music training can have many benefits for children and studies, and I would need my next slide, please. And studies evaluating children with typical hearing 
uh, revealed stronger, for example, perception of vocal pitch or perception of speech in noisy backgrounds, as well as uh, auditory discrimination and tension to just name here three examples. And, you know, in our field of hearing loss and um, hearing implants, these benefits are of really high interest because we would like to see these benefits for example, for children with cochlear implants. And um, more in the past, let's say 10 years, uh, some research has shown that there are similar benefits for children with cochlear implants when they engage in music activities. So for example, in a study from Torpa uh, and colleagues, uh, they've shown that just involvement of music activities uh, at home with parents uh, that these children did better uh, with speech in, in background noise, that they did better with perception of vocal pitch. Um, so I think, you know, those benefits that we see in normal hearing children um, are to a certain degree also visible in children with cochlear implants. And again, we want we want to use this for us, for our, to our advantage. Yeah, and, and I agree with you. I've, I've read some of that research. And again, we know that music has benefits for children who have typical hearing. And there is, as you said, in the last few years, more research um, on children who actually have cochlear implants and the benefits that it can provide for these children, such as pitch or prosody perception and even helping with speech and language. So there's no doubt as a rehabilitationist in my mind that rehabilitation music training is very important and should be a part of rehabilitation. Um, so we know it's important, it has benefits, it's fun. Um, which yeah. is wonderful about it, and that there's a role of it in rehabilitation. So here at Medell, we've been focusing on providing some resources that can be useful for parents and professionals who want to provide music training for their child or for the children that they're working with. Um, maybe, Johanna, you could tell us about some of these. Yes, so I'm really excited about two new resources this year that we are now starting to talk about. And um, the first one I'd like to mention is Meludia. Um, as part of the Metal Music Festival uh, on Thursday, when the festival started, we launched our collaboration with Meludia worldwide. And what that allows us is to provide online music training uh, to all our MyModel users. So if MyModel is available in your country, then um, Medel offers you to access Meludia music training, online music training um, for free, unlimited for 12 months once you start it. And uh, Meludia offers a really comprehensive, um, independent, music training that is really meant for long term with over 600 exercises uh, with over 1 million sound sequences. So you can, you can decide, you can practice from home. Um, you can independently choose your schedule. You don't have to go anywhere. And to, you can be busy for the next three to five years, I think. And, um, Meludia can be used by adults as well as by children. Meludia recommends um, or says that children seven years and older can use Meludia very autonomously and younger children can together play Meludia with their parents. That's fantastic. I think it's really exciting um, that they're having this launch and there's a music training program available, which I will avail myself of it because I'm not so great at music either <laughs> um, and could try to improve my musicality. Uh, but this is fantastic for hearing implant users because it isn't just Melody, it's tailored for hearing implant users, which is, I think, yeah. very unique. 
in that respect. And I'd like to add here that, um, you know, we offer Meludia through MyModel uh, to all MyModel account users, which means, of course, our hearing implant users, it's meant for them, but also professionals can access Meludia for free for 12 months, um, as well as parents, caregivers, and even Medell internals. So Mary yeah, Kay, if one you want to pick up. <laughs> Okay. Well, great. So that's one resource. Um, I'm, you mentioned it was more for children. I believe you said seven and older. Um, and yeah, if they're younger, to, to maybe children. Have yeah, yeah five, so, six okay. years old. Okay. And do we have another resource that might be for those children who are a bit younger and we want to um, involve maybe the parent or professional a little bit more? Yeah. Okay, and yes, this is now our the second resource I want to mention, and uh, which we will focus on for the rest of the workshop. So I'm really excited to share with you uh, the new musical ears. All right, so I do know that we've had musical ears in the past that um, Julie Cossider had uh, developed, and now as a musicologist, I, I think Julie was very... Um, had great foresight um, in developing this years ago, knowing that music is very important for children. And so now we have you as the musicologist and we um, now have this version of the musical ears. Uh, can you tell me, um, are there different components or pieces to this? Um, maybe let me start with like what the aim is. Okay. And so musical ears, was created to provide support and guidance um, for professionals and for parents and caregivers who want to engage children with hearing implants and music activities. And um, it offers concrete goals that can be used in therapy and school sessions and at home. And uh, this new musical ears is meant for children between two and 10 years. Each of the music activities had, has an age recommendation, which is very broad because I think with some adjustments, you can do such an activity with a four-year-old, but also with a seven-year-old. Um, depending, you know, there are also other factors that might um, have an impact on your decision, what you want to practice. And so that's why we left it the age range relatively wide. And now coming back to your question, Mary Kay, what does it consist of? So Musical Ears now is a, a, a booklet that can be downloaded for free uh, on the Academy as a PDF if you want. Of course, you can also get um, a, a bind, bind version or you bind it for yourself. And it comes with accompanying videos uh, that demonstrates some of the music activities that are described in musical years. Okay, and I think in a few minutes we're going to get to see one or two of the videos. But before that, I want to move into um, our next question that we have for you is, do you dance with your, if you're a caregiver, do you dance with your children at home? Or if you're a professional, do you have dance as part of your therapy session? Um, and Johanna, um, because you're a musicologist and I know we have a young daughter, I'm going to assume that you do dancing as you had so many of the musical toys. Um, could you maybe tell us um, what does that look like for you and your daughter, the dancing, um, uh, and what specifically do you do? Um, okay, so currently my daughter likes to swirl around. Um, and she really likes uh, to push a button on the keyboard that plays a particular song and she would play that one song over and over and over again and then twirls to it and moves to it. Um, we sometimes do family dance together, which is, you know, some extra time to bond in, in a kind of musical way. I like doing that together with my husband. We would sometimes, I mean, before we had uh, 
our daughter, we would dance in the kitchen sometimes. So it's, you know, part of bonding, being close, moving to the music. And um, if you have small children, you might still have them on your arm um, so they can feel the rhythm and feel the movements. And my daughter Gemma, who does not use hearing implants, but but I do, and she sometimes takes off my processor, and she knows about, you know, mommy has a different ear. Um, but it's nice to do these activities together, and either in an independent way or kind of led by the by the parent. Okay, and I love the fact that you said like family dance because we know one of the benefits was social and emotional. You know, yeah. and that just lends right into that bonding um, as a family. All right, so I think that's going to lead us into our first video. I think it has something to do with dance. So, Johanna, do you want to maybe introduce this uh, video? I will say uh, I did therapy for quite a few years. I did have music um, as part of my therapy, but it was more singing like young children's nursery rhymes or, you know, I will not sing for you. Johanna can sing beautifully. I cannot. So, um, you know, would the child be able to, if I did uh, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, could they recognize which song I was doing versus doing maybe the wheels on the bus? Um, but I didn't really dance. I never thought of that as part of the therapy. Um, and now I have to rethink a little bit on that. And we do have someone who says we dance. That's fantastic. I love to see that. All right, well, let's take a look. Johanna's gonna introduce uh, one of the demonstration videos that we have from Musical Ears, and I think it includes dancing. Yes, it will. So this um, video you're going to see in just a second demonstrates a music activity uh, for the skill level of recognition. And um, you see uh, not just the children, but also the parents being involved. And um, I think this activity, as simple as it is, um, you might be surprised that we show this as a demonstration. But um, when you, you know, listen to the end of the video and the explanation, um, you, you will see that it's quite meaningful to children. So let's play the video. Hello and welcome to the Musical Ears videos from Adele. In these videos, we will demonstrate some of the music activities from Musical Ears that will teach your child to recognize, imitate and improvise musical elements and forms of expression. In today's video, you will see Charlie and Margot with their parents practicing recognition of start and stop of music through moving to the music. Let's take a look. Charlie and Margot were learning about start and stop of music. A fun way to do this with young children is to involve the parents and play the freeze game. As you saw in the video, the parents held them, which allowed Charlie and Margot to feel start and stop as well as the rhythm and tempo of the music through their parents' exaggerated movements. The parents took advantage of the natural opportunity to use the word stop. Note that even Charlie recognized the stop of music and verbalized stop. Keep in mind that music activities can provide opportunities for language learning, such as go and stop in this activity. Great, I, I love that video. Again, I'm a rehabilitationist and not only is there music, but there was language involved and that, you know, Charlie was really <laughs> using his words and being mean, you know, power words. And I love that. So, 
it is, you know, again, music does so many things, as we mentioned earlier, and communication or language is part of it. So as you said, it is just, it's more than just playing a freeze game. There's much more involved to it um, that you're getting out of that little musical activity. Um, so I love that. So getting back to musical ears, um, Johanna, can you tell us more about it, like how you organized it or how you arranged the goals for this? Yeah, so uh, musical ears is a program that utilizes a holistic approach to children's musical development, um, where music musical activities involve four forms of expression, which you can see in the middle. And these are singing, rhythm, movement and instruments so as a music pedagogue myself of course i learned you know various concepts like uh carl orff and others so this is not absolutely new um the new aspect of this concept is that music activities which uh, use these forms of expression are approached more gradually and repeatedly related to three skill levels. And the skill levels are recognition, imitation, and improvisation. And um, the focus here was really to add recognition because it is an important foundational skill level that needs to be considered for children with hearing loss. Uh, and it is relevant to evaluate a child's auditory status before deciding on a particular music training goal. Okay, great. Um, sounds like um, it's very thought out um, on how you put this together. Um, so yeah. with that, I wanna move on to another question. So we asked you if you dance with the children, but this question is, do you sing with your child? either at home or again as a professional, do you do singing or are you singing in your therapy session? Um, and again, while you're typing in chat, Johanna, I'm gonna ask you, um, and I know you probably do, but tell us about you know singing with Gemma. Um, what does that look like uh, for you at home? Um, so after she was born, the most typical, um, First thing to do is, I think, sing lullaby, lullabies or something to calm your child down. And um, I, you know, like singing one song over and over and over again actually works best when you want to, when you need to calm down your crying child. And um, now it's all about nursery songs and rhymes. Gemma really doesn't like when I perform a song for her. I'm a singer, uh, I'm a songwriter and singer, and so she's not so much interested in that. But she wants to sing the typical songs over and over again, like the wheels on the bus. Uh, but really, repetition is how is really something so important how children learn. I think as a parent, when you have to sing the same song over and over again, uh, that A, gets boring, and B, you wonder what does your child take from this, you know, if you do the same song over and over again. But I just read recently that really this extensive repetition um, transfers later on to better reading skills, for example. So. I don't feel I don't feel too bad about you know repeating the same song for the hundredth time. And sometimes I sing songs in the car because it's a good way to uh, get her attention and stop complaining. Um, yeah, and all kinds of daily uh, in daily life. And of course, before going to bed, we maybe look also at some um, song books where it's played, but I typically sing along with it. And um, yeah, she's all interested in number songs and, you know, learning vocabulary. I think it's a lot, this repetition is because she's trying to grasp the different words and the different actions. She loves actions, especially the doors on the bus go open and shut. Yeah, that's very typical development. and. 
repetition, repetition, repetition. As you said, as the parent, you are far more tired of the song than your child is. Um, <laughs> that she's <laughs> you've sang it for the hundredth time, and she wants it for a hundred and one. Um, yeah, that uh, that is normal. And please continue to repeat, repeat, repeat. And I love that you made the. Um, observation, and I was going to make that comment about nursery rhymes and rhyming um, and these songs, that those are pre-reading skills, and they are hooked up to literacy. So if you can do these kinds of songs with children, lots of repetition, lots of nursery rhymes, that does have an impact in their later literacy development with that. So um, I'm going to take a look. Uh, so... We have a response that says, my one-year-old is obsessed with row, row, row your boat. And we sing it not a hundred times, a hundred thousand times a day. And I'm taking it that mom's probably a little tired of it, but that's fantastic. Um, makes it more bear bearable when changing the tempo, the words, singing in higher pitches, lower pitches, et cetera. Um, I love that. I, I love the idea, you know, part of the musical ears talks about getting children to recognize tempo differences, pitch differences, you know, and if your child has this hearing implant, we want them to be able to hear all of these sound differences. So even though it's boring for you, continue <laughs> to do it because it's very helpful for your child. So um, I'm sure you've got the words down and we won't sing that today, but um, yeah, that that's fantastic with the singing. And so, I wanted to go ahead and um, Johanna, have you introduced this next video? Because I think that, again, it has to do with singing. Yes, yeah, so we have another um, video prepared for you. And this video demonstrates music activity, uh, music activity for the skill level improvisation related to singing. And I think what you will be uh, most surprised about is that we do an improvisational activity with a very young child. Um, okay, so let's take a look. Hello and welcome to the Musical Ears videos from Adele. In these videos, we will demonstrate some of the music activities from musical ears that will teach your child to recognize, imitate and improvise musical elements and forms of expression. In today's video, you will see me singing a question and encouraging Margot to sing her answer with the help of her mother. Let's see her in action. You saw me singing questions and Margot being encouraged to respond by singing her answers. This activity helps children explore vocal production to establish links from vocalization to other musical skills. 
There are no set rules for using rhythm or pitch, so it is an easy way to start vocal improvisation. You also saw Margot imitating a sentence that was sung. Note that she was able to approximate the melodic contour of the sentence. This then led into Margot spontaneously attempting to improvise a sentence herself by singing color names. I love that because, you know, we talked about uh, singing to your child, but now this is really starting to encourage the children to sing, taking some of the pressure off that they don't have to know words to a song, um, but they can just, you know, make something up or respond to a question, uh, something like that. Um, so that's fantastic. You know, it's all kinds of these little, I'm going to call them tips and tricks, but, you know, activities that are in the musical ears as um, someone who's not that knowledgeable about music, like what can I do to really facilitate and get children to appreciate and, and learn from music? So love that video too. Um, so now we've seen how it's organized and some examples of the goals. Are there any other components uh, or pieces to this resource? Um, I think I'd like to share to our audience first kind of a sneak peek how musical ears looks like. So if you could um, bring up the slides okay. again. Yes, okay. So here you kind of see uh, one typical page of musical ears. Uh, this is from the recognition chapter. And you see here goal seven, which is uh, songs and rhymes. And there's a short introduction and then an activity, in that case, 7A, recognize songs, you see the age recommendation, and then below, uh, there are further adaptations to switch things up, to make it easier or harder, and then you also can see a tip box to provide some examples. Um, here you can see our goals at a glance, you basically have a good overview of the three skill level with their individual goals and you can see each of the goals has multiple activities and as you know each activity has adaptations and tips and um, what you can use goals at a glance too is to use this as a checklist um, you can it is indicated or there's a checkbox and um, Mary Kay, help me out. What are the three options? So you can emerging. Yeah, you um, emerging, mastered, or check it as a goal. So you can choose your goals that people know what you're working on. And then if this goal is emerging, maybe around 50%, you can check that so you have an idea of what the children or group of children, if you're working with a group, are doing. And then if it's mastered, you can check it off. So you can start to go through each of these goals to really see how the child is progressing. Yeah, and I might want to add one more important point before going to this slide, additional resources. And that is that, um, of course, we, you know, what we wanted to do with Musical Ears is to provide lots of lots of ideas for you. Uh, but there isn't really a set rule of in what order you have to follow. Uh, I think it is pretty adjustable also in terms of examples. So yeah, so you can use it in your country, in your culture. Uh, and what we wanna give you is ideas and, and goals you can focus on. Uh, and then now we can move to the next slide. Thank you. Um, Mary Kay asked me, are there any you know, additional resources? Yes, there are. So aside from the, the main part of the book and the videos, um, there's also an evaluation form included, which you can see on the right slide um, to assess the child's progress in three categories, which are singing, recognizing songs, and responding to music and rhythm. And then additionally, we have different types of lesson plans. So uh, for one session lesson plans and six three months lesson plans to help you with your planning and giving some suggestions. And these lesson plans uh, have indicated if they are for a beginner or a, 
for what type of level, a beginner, intermediate, or advanced level. So these are the additional resources. And maybe last but not least, I should mention that um, what we would like to do in the future is to provide updates. And uh, these updates could be new videos. Uh, we definitely have still some footage left. And uh, maybe we are hoping also to get some videos from you, the professionals, or you, the parents. And um, then, you know, we have plans to share more information or other types of updates through our either professional blog or the metal blog. And I believe, Mary Kay, there is an upcoming post um, late fall that um, helped me out that focuses on what? It, it actually, again, it talks, it takes one of the goals from um, musical ears, but adds in how you can add language to the goal. So it's a language and music activity. So just making it very practical. Um, and on September 27th, and I believe Verena has already put in the chat, um, the blog post that we have introducing kind of launching this newest version of musical ears. Um, and I just wanted to go back on one point that I, I think that you made was about using this in different languages. Um, mm -hmm. You can see like the videos that you showed, it doesn't matter what language you use. Um, you know, you can use songs that are, you know, from your culture. Um, you can ask questions in your language and it's pretty much all the goals work that way. So this is really very highly adaptable material to different languages because it's using music and it's not so language um, dependent. So you can use um, even, you know, nursery rhymes or cultural songs from your area and, and then add in using your language uh, with the child. So that's what's really nice about this. And thank you for actually, yeah, this is kind of a growing piece. This musical ears is done, but we um, feel that there's so many things that we can continue to do with it. So we will have, you know, additional blog posts coming out in the future uh, with that. And we still have videos of these children that we might be able to do more with, uh, with that. So thank you, Johanna. It just, um, musical ears sounds like a very comprehensive um, piece and covers many, many things. Um, I think we're really excited about it. There's many things that we can do with it. Um, and it really is going to be useful for parents and professionals. So Johanna, thank you for um, introducing us to this music training program that's for children um, with the aim of providing support and guidance for parents and professionals to engage children in musical activities. So I think that now takes us to the end of this part of the workshop. And now we're getting to be hands-on and we get to try some musical activity. So I'm gonna hand it over to Johanna at this point to take it from here. Okay, thank you. Um, Mary Kay, maybe you can still help me out with the chat because I would like to start with a question first. Um, so if people share their input, maybe you can read it out for me. But okay. first of all, let me share what, what the question I want to ask you, which is, which objects at home, uh, and that, that's true for the professionals as well. I want you to think about your home and uh, think about what objects can be used as musical instruments or to make music. Okay, so we have- So that I'll give you- chat. Yeah, I'll and... give you some time to type something. And in the meantime, I'm just going to ask Mary Kay, you knew I'm going to ask this question. Have you prepared something from home? I have. Um, I'm going to use one of our props. So just <laughs> <laughs> objects. I have my cup and my spoon that I can use okay. this as an instrument. Yeah, uh, I, I also brought some things from the kitchen. Um, All right, so maybe you want to show us what you have, Johanna. Sure, sure. Grab it. Okay, so I brought um, two salad bowls, or I mean, bowls could also be used for something else than salad, obviously. Um, and I also brought some chopsticks to use as the alternative to um, drumsticks. Okay, creative. 
Well, yeah, I, I, I think I think it's pretty simple. And um, if you have children at home, they definitely end up playing in the kitchen and oh. getting all your things out, unless you have everything closed. But I don't think many parents do that. They get into the pots and pans and the covers. So I think one additional point I want to make here is that uh, counting, you know, is very helpful when you introduce rhythms or, um, yeah, when you introduce rhythms. And my daughter, she currently uh, is all into counting till 10. So she really uh, pays attention to the counting and um, has fun with that. And I understand, of course, that children, when they get older, it's, it's not something new to count, but it still will help them to get steady with a tempo and kind of just realize from the internal to the external in, for example, clapping or drumming a, a rhythm like the one we just did. Now, um, next what I've prepared is, or, or one activity that is described in musical ears uh, in the imitation skill level or its imitation chapter is related to body percussion. So even if we are not at home and don't have any objects around us, then we can still use our own body to create sound. And I think that's quite, you know, natural and playful for children. And we want to make use of that. So um one thing i would like us to do and that's just simply to encourage to inspire you to be more active and that is think of different combinations um to reproduce that rhythm that we just did with the uh objects um or not mu not typical musical objects so uh, we had four measures. I, I clap one more time the rhythm. One, two, three, four. And now I want you to use, you can use the hands as well and you can clap, but I want you to think of a combination. How would you represent with your body this rhythm again? Um, so maybe let's first think about, and, and Mary Kay, I'll just ask you to keep an eye on the chat if there's any, you know, question or comment in regard to that, what we're talking about. Um, so what are all the things with our body that can, that we can use? Obviously there are our hands, obviously there are our feet. <laughs> we can clap on our, on our legs we can what else but on other parts of our body yeah good suggestion mary Kay. um so one suggestion or one combination for example i would do and i guess we can't fully see my legs but i'll just make bigger movements is one two three four one two three four so that that's my uh, solution or my proposal for one um, body percussion of that particular rhythm. And now I hope you're brave and you share a different combination that you come up. I think they need children. To their... Children like to use also all kinds of facial related sounds. So that could be a or that could be anything you can produce with your mouth other than speech. Some, I did this activity recently with children and I, I don't know, I'm surprised every time again that they come up with so much more, um, how do you say, you have so much more ideas and think outside the box and, uh, which is quite inspiring. So I just want you to come up with a solution. And when you're ready, please turn on your camera and your mic and share it with us. I can go first. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll have to see that. Not super original. I'm stealing a little <laughs> bit. But <laughs> oh. 
Okay, can you do it three times in a row? Uh, maybe. Yay, good job, everything. <laughs> One move I like, love from the children when we did those video recordings. I don't know, Mary Kay, if you remember, it was like as similar to what we just now saw now is not so much a move that makes sound, but to involve some type of expression with your body. And so they did like something like yeah. this. Yeah, they were doing um, I thought that was quite creative. Yeah, they had a lot of fun with it. So what I want to do is I will introduce you to an activity called Musical Rondo. And um, this activity is also described in Musical Ears. Yeah. Um, so Musical Rondo um, is a rhythm activity in the improvisation chapter and uh, consists of a particular structure. So one rhythm is in a group setting used by all, uh, and that's the theme A or the rhythm A. And so the rhythm that we just clapped uh, previously, uh, that will be our rhythm A. So again, just to remind you, it's one, two, three, four. So this is our rhythm A. Um, and it's, you know, if you use this activity with children at home or in therapy or in your session, then uh, that would be the rhythm you play on a drum or clap, use body percussion um, all together. And then um, between this rhythm A, each of the child each of the children have the opportunity to improvise their own rhythm. So this kind of gives a nice structure to uh, switch between something they've imitated and familiar with to something where they get a chance to improvise and then go back to something familiar and then the next person improvises. Um, so with that, you get a structure of A, B, A, C, A, D, and so on, depending on how big the circle is. Uh, Mary Kay, does it make sense what I've explained? Okay. Maybe, Johanna, why don't you use me as your child? And okay. we could, yeah, and why don't we try it first? And I, I know what was helpful in the videos when you'd kind of point to the child so they knew it was their turn. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah. let's do that. Let's do that. So, right. so we will, okay, let me um, use my drum. Drum and do the finger. Wait one second. And I think maybe you were first, in, you know, like then you did the rondo first. And so, then... um, first we're going to play the rhythm A, the yeah. one that we play together. So, what I will do is I will count till four, and after that we will play the rhythm two times, the two measures, and then it will be your time to improvise. Okay. 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 First, let me count in four so you can get the tempo. Okay. okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very good. Okay. So we first, I counted in to give you the tempo. Then we played the rhythm two times together. Then you improvised. And, you know, we, we left a little bit of room there um, out of the, the beat to uh, just allow you uh, not make it stressful to improvise. And then we went back to the original rhythm, which we played together. We're kind of coming to the end. Um, and so I wanted to leave a little bit of time for questions. Um, and I see that one has come up. Um, so if you do have a question, please feel free or comment to type in the chat. And so Ada had a question, Johanna. I think it's a great question. So 
Um, her child was activated about four years now. Um, mm -hmm. Would she benefit from such musical game activities as much as a child newly activated would? Based on my experience, um, I would say that no matter when you start, children will benefit. So it's never too late. Um, of course, when children get the chance to do things like that early on, um, like when they, you know, with everything else that they do early on, if they get implanted early on, it's a benefit and less of a delay. Um, early on is probably best, but again, it's never too late and you shouldn't hesitate to, uh, to go for it. And since music provides so much fun, um, and if your child is interested and responds, then yes, again, go for it. Okay. It's not too late. And, yeah, and I think that um, in the goals at a glance, or in the lesson plan, sorry, it talked about, you know, some activities that were more for a beginning level child, maybe who's first starting or some more intermediate or more advanced. So maybe for your, your child, um, they may already have some of the skills. That's why you can use the goals at a glance to check off. But I would imagine there's some skills, musical skills um, that are not checked off and can be goals. I mean, even for yeah. myself, I could look at some of the activities in there and think of, I could probably work on that as a goal um, for myself. So um, yeah, I think for, um, it's never, as you say, never too late to start. And we know that uh, besides increasing music perception, increasing music appreciation, um, there's all those other benefits for music too. So, okay. Let me just take one last look at the chat to see if there were any other questions. It's your last chance if anybody had any other questions. Well, I would say it's not the last chance. Like if you want to reach us, if you have questions in the future, please don't hesitate to reach out to Medell uh, and us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, with that, then we're kind of coming towards the end. Um, I just want to thank everybody for attending uh, one of the last events that we're having with our, our music festival, um, Sound Sensation. And don't forget tonight, we still have a little bit more and, and, and really fun and exciting the grand finale, uh, where we're going to hear hearing implant users um, performing with the Vienna Philharmonic. And then also the um, virtual voices and band playing that Ode to Joy, which I'm really excited to listen to with that. So, and then don't forget everything else, um, all the other events, um, if you've missed some of them, that they will be available online. Um, so you can always watch them at your own leisure. And this will also be available online for quite a few months. So. I think with that, we'll go ahead and close out. Thank you, everybody, for attending uh, the music workshop for your child. Um, and with that, I think we will let you go. Mm -hmm.